There's been quite an evolution in photographic lighting even in my age. I can remember in elementary school being photographed where the photographer actually used flash powder. It lit up the whole room from the subject all the way to the background and it looked completely natural. And that's what we're going to be going for today. Lighting that looks completely natural so that you're not aware that we're actually adding flash to the picture. Well, after the powder, I personally went to hot lights. The hot lights were pretty difficult to use with the people glaring, with the glaring into the people's eyes. And so eventually people said, you've got to go over to flash. Well, I went over to flash bulbs, big ones at first, and then later on, small flash bulbs. I didn't even think decreasing the size on the bulbs would make the pictures effective, but it did. Then as soon as I got used to the flash bulbs, they said, okay, strobe is in fashion now. So I got great big strobes because I wanted to make sure that I had enough light. Pretty soon I found out that I didn't need that much light to accomplish what we wanted to do. Now, the state-of-the-art flashes are very small, candid strobes, just like this. With just one or two flashes like this, we can accomplish a heck of a lot of photography. I've been really impressed with this Sunpak 120J used with the reflector on or with the reflector off in bare bulb position. Watch us as Clay, my partner, and I work together with the class to demonstrate the effectiveness of the strobe outside and eventually we'll go inside. We'll review a lot of what we've done in the past and bring you up to date with exactly what we're doing with the strobes now. Thank you. The whole purpose of going outdoors is to have another dimension of the photographs. You want to have a lot of depth so that it doesn't look like a studio portrait. Yet, at the same time, we're posing people the same way we do in the studio and we're lighting them with the same light pattern. So there's not that much difference. The first thing that I'm going to do is look for a background. I look for a background that has light on it. It's either got direct sunlight on it or it's got light filtering through from the back. So in this first instance, we're going to photograph the people in the shade with the bright sunlight behind them. What we're going to do is we're going to expose for the people in the shade. It's very soft, easy light here. The background is going to go overexposed, and I don't mind that in the least. I don't want the background to go real dark. If it goes light, it doesn't matter. I just don't want a dark background on one side and a light background on the other. And if it's going to be bright, I'd like the brightness right behind the people as opposed to all the way over in the corner to take the attention away from the people. So in a situation like this, when we look around here, I don't want to go into the dark trees here. I don't want to go into this dark tree. I like photographing back towards the house because back towards the house, there's nice light filtering through from behind. I like photographing out here towards the bright fall leaves. And by the way, even in the middle of the summer when the leaves are green, if they're going to be in bright sunlight and we're exposing for the shade, the leaves are going to go overexposed anyway. So it's possible to get a fall look in the middle of the summer. Let's put together first uh, a family group right here. So we have to think in advance, how much of that background do I want to show? I've already selected the background is going to be the bright leaves over there. That's my number one thought. Now my, th my second thought is, how much of the background do I want to show? I want to concentrate the background to just the people with the area behind them. To me, that means a telephoto lens, a 150 millimeter lens. So then I have to decide, okay, where am I going to, I can walk around just like this, and I think right where you people are seated, if I'm up here high, all I get in the background is the shaded grass behind you, right around you. But if I come down low, I can get all, pick up all that background there behind you. Understand camera height makes a big difference outside because it changes the background completely. So let's start to just put together a family group. We have two girls here and you're dressed in dark clothing, so you'll be the daughters, all right? <laughs> and uh, Bruce, you look like you could be the father. You're dressed appropriately. We need a mother for this. Who's got a mother image here? So we've selected the background over here. 
we've selected this area. So how about if we uh, clear this area? We're going to leave the leaves on the ground, and we'll start posing in this direction. Why don't we start with, uh, we'll pose one, one daughter at a time. So can you have a seat right here? Right here? Yeah. And let your feet go downhill, if you will. Turn around like this. That's it. But I want to face you into the group, so you're going to turn your body this way more. Still some more. I want to keep your body at a 45. That's great. Okay, we're going to put you a little bit uphill here. And let your feet go out that way. Let me just, that's right. And you'll sit the same way she is, but facing into the center. Great. Okay, can you kneel down right here in between them? Bruce, step aside for a minute. <clears throat> you want to move the strobe here? All right, you understand his, his light pants are really going to blow the picture here. <laughs> uh, let's see. We're not, I'm not going to worry about it. Just <clears throat> let's, let's do the three of you together. Just kneel down on one knee. Cause <clears throat> and just both of you lean into him. You can put your arm around both girls and come up tight. Come up a little higher. That's it. <clears throat> now you can let your left hand come out here and cover up the tush and your right hand over here and just put it on your shoe here that's fine <clears throat> all of you looking here at me and you see we have a group of three here we're building in sort of a pyramid so that could be one picture they are just the group of three we're just talking composition now so let's shoot this can you come up a little higher that's it let's take an exposure meter reading clay <clears throat> of the light on their faces <clears throat> 30th and 5.6 is what we're usually shooting at. So now we, there's no light in their eyes. Do you understand that? Their eyes are completely dark, and it's also very cool in the shade here. So we, we want to bring in a flash, but we don't want it to look like a bright flash. So the flash has to be less than the uh, ambient light. So if we're a 30th at 5, 6, how much flash do we want on them? Four. Four. Now, when you have three people like this, the light can come actually from either side because they're all going to be full face. So could you both turn your bodies in towards him? And what you have to be careful about is not to lean on that back shoulder. Just let the shoulder relax. You may want to extend your hand out further this way. And let, let your left shoulder go down just a touch. Yes. Now turn your face back to me. Now what we want to do is we want to keep all the heads going towards the flash at the same angle. So you can't tip your head that way. That's right. So you're going to have to tip your head. And your name, Barbara? Turn your face to me just a little bit, a little bit more, and tip your head this way. And could you tip your head that way? She's in a feminine pose, and the two of them are in a basic pose which means the flash goes on which side? It has to go on this side because all the faces are turned in that direction. So we'll bring the flash over here, and how much flash do we want to get on it? On them. Okay. Now, Clay is not using a bare bulb at this point because the, the light is back so far, it's going to be a soft, diffused light just by bringing it back. And usually if we have a group full length, he will leave the reflector on the flash. So now, to measure the strobe, to measure the strobe, just the strobe light, on the exposure meter only, on the exposure meter only, we'll pump it up to maybe 125th of a second because we want to measure just the strobe and not the daylight and strobe combined. So you want to do that, and I'll, I'll uh, hit the strobe here. Test button. Okay. Is, uh, is balanced even. It's the same, as, so we need to turn it down a little bit. Let's go on manual. I put it on automatic 5.6 to see where we'd be. We're right on 5.6. So we're going to go to manual. And you can look at their faces, guys. You can almost see it if you do it enough. That's going to be right about there. Let's try that. 
4.5. What do you say? I think that might that might work. Uh, you might turn it down even just a tiny bit more. Okay, one thing too. Look how the reflector is just bringing this big, bold light in. I notice that a lot of times people have family groups and the, car, or the grass is too hot. Now I'm going to tip it up just a little. Now we're taking this light right into the people and not onto the grass. We're keeping the flash a little bit under the ambient light. We're using a reflector on the strobe because when we bring it back this far, we might need a little bit more than the bare bulb will give us on the Sunpack 120J. So what we're going to do is we're going to tip this light up just a little bit. So the majority of the light is passing above them. They're getting just the bottom edge of it. That'll keep the ground from going too bright. Mm -hmm. And let's, let's test it right here. Yeah, we're getting and less than four now because we're feathering that light up. We're using just the edge of it. That's perfect. The flash, whoops, let's go one more time, that flash. Okay. The flash is a little under four now, so we need to just bring it a little closer. Right there, and now we're ready. Okay. But what we'll do is we'll do a paranoid, a Polaroid test first, okay, <laughs> to make sure that we have the flash and the ambient light okay. good. Can you turn your body towards him just a little bit and turn your, no, she's all right. Turn your face back to the light. Okay, I'm looking right here at me. Let your elbow in. Let your, his elbow down. It looks like it's sticking out too much. That's right. Okay, and all of you looking here at me and just a little touch of a smile there like that. Barbara, sit up. Okay, turn your face to me and tip your head in this direction. Tip your head still some more and your chin down now to the camera level. Bring your chin down, Barbara, just your chin. Little smile from all three of you. Now, I don't have to get the perfect Polaroid. What I want to do is see how the flash, if the flash is too light or too dark. Once we do that, we can do whatever groups we want. We can add the mother and father to the picture and do whatever is necessary there. Well, the flash would only throw a shadow on somebody's face if the flash were over at a 45 degree angle. When we do a group, we're bringing the flash a lot closer to the center. So we're really not that concerned about the flash. Have we got a minute on that? Okay, this is just about as nice as we're going to get it. It looks totally natural. You can pass it around, and the flash was just right, Clay. If you're unsure about metering flash outside, when we change this up to 125th or 250, we're just cutting the ambient light out. We're metering just the burst of strobe. If you're unsure, take it and meter it at 250th, and now change it to 60. 30, and you can see the light reading changing, almost a full stop. To read it accurately and know just how much flash is there, the shutter speed on this only should be up around 120, okay? The camera stayed at a 30th the whole time. The whole idea is expose like there's no flash and add just a wink of flash where you don't even know it's there, a half or a full stop under, just to shape out the face and kind of warm up the picture. Let's put this picture on film so you'll have it in the print set, then we'll add the parents to it. All right. And a little smile from all three of you. Okay, let's analyze the results. It appears as if the people were just naturally sitting there, posing, happy, looking at the camera. They're in the shade. The sun is hitting the background. We're exposing for the light where they're seated. We're adding just a little bit less strobe than the ambient light and that's what keeps it so natural. In the meantime, we have to pose the composition so that each person in the picture looks good by himself or by herself. When we put the posing and the lighting together and then get a great expression, we've got a great photograph that will satisfy them all. Let's add the parents to the picture. There's no sense changing anything because we know we got it working. So. <clears throat> Now, if we're going to have five people in the picture, that to me means three on the ground and two coming up, right? So we have our choice of putting the mother down or the three children down. I'm going to put the three children down on the ground. I don't want to have two heads next to each other at the same level unless there's somebody above them in between. So I can put three people on the ground if you'll spread uphill just a little bit, Barb. Can you sit right here? Let your feet, instead of going that way, let me sit where you are. 
it's easier for me to demonstrate what I'm doing. <clears throat> Let your feet go behind, and you'll be pretty much like that. And then you c you'll come right into here, Barb. Just, just put your tush down right where I was, right where you were. <clears throat> but make sure your bodies that are turned into me like that, even if this hand may be better going back here, and that way you can turn your shoulders in. So what are we going to do, do differently with the flash now that we have five people instead of three? Nothing, that's right, yeah. <laughs> okay, you're going to come up, <clears throat> mind you, when you go down there on one knee, mm -hmm. and you're going to lean forward, put your arms around them, and she can tip her head back in that same direction. Now what about fingers showing on shoulders? Does it matter? It does to you? Well, <laughs> Bruce, a lot of people feel like they don't like fingers showing. Uh, it's just a question of how you feel. I love hands in the picture. I'm a real touchy person, and I like people holding each other. So you might think of it instead of little uh, bananas or mice coming out, you might think of a little touch of love coming around, too. Maybe you like the fingers a little bit better. Show a little bit of the hand. Now, who's the father here? Okay. <clears throat> So you're going to go down here on your right knee, turn a little bit into the group. Everybody's turned into the group. You may as well go down on both knees, you'll be able to get in closer. And you can uh, lean in, Bruce, this way. <clears throat> Why don't you take your name tag off here? Manya, lean in this way and let your left shoulder drop. We're posing each person to look good individually. Bruce, lean into the group. That's, and come up taller, Bruce. Clay's just moving the light a little bit more to center. And we need all your faces coming right back at me. Barbara, tip your head in that way. I'm going to have to move the camera back just a little bit because we've got <coughs> the picture spread out more. Mom, you turn your face this way to me. Keep your head straighter. You've got your head tipped too much. That's it. That's fine. Bruce, lean in a little closer to your wife. And can you come up taller? All right. And I think... This hand looks good, but I, I agree with you. That hand's too far away. So we'll let it go like that. And in the center, you've got to sit up just a little bit. Roll. Tip your head this way, Roland. And let your right hand go on the ground here. Uh, no, let it rest on your leg, and I think it'll look more natural that way. Okay, ladies, looking good just that way. Barbara, tip your head that way some. And Manya, moving a little closer to your husband. That's it. <laughs> Barbara, you keep tipping your head the wrong way. Come up a little bit, Barbara. Tip your head in that way. That's it. All set. One, two, three. Manya smiling. Bruce, what a family picture. Okay, let's, let's understand what we did here. We went from the shade and exposed for the shade. We put in one f-stop less with the flash. To keep the background, I mean, to keep the foreground from burning up, he tipped the flash up just a tiny bit so the light's hitting their faces but not hitting the ground. The reason the flash is close to the center and not off to one side is because we don't want one person throwing a shadow onto another person. So when you look at the picture, you're not even aware that it's there. The lighting is simple and so is the posing. We sat three people on the ground at the lower level, and then we brought the parents in from behind a little bit higher and in between them all three. And now if you're at a wedding and you don't want to bother with your meter and running back and forth and changing the shutter speeds, you just want to get a good picture, right? Take the flash and go on automatic for 100 speed film at f5.6. So I dialed in to 5.6, there we are. I know that this flash is going to give me 5.6 at this point. And I just put 5.6 on the people. We put the lens at 5.6 and a half. Close what does that mean? What, what does, does that, that mean? mean? The flash is unnoticeable. It's natural. We didn't even need a light meter. Great. Okay. Just using the flash on automatic. Set the camera one stop darker than the flash. Or you can match it if you want. You know, wedding candles don't look so bad when you match the flash. Good bright flash because the background is not going to go too dark, especially in this situation, right? with those fall colors. 
So let's try it. Let's put it on 5.6. We'll put the camera on five six or five six and a half if we want to make it look real natural. All right, let's do just one person. Come okay. in close, and we'll go bare bulb. Okay, we'll change. We'll go bare bulb. The reason we're going to go bare bulb now is because we're going to bring the flash in closer. We'll do an individual person, and uh, okay, Linda, you want to stand up, please? Thanks, guys. Thank you. There you You'll remember to always turn and tip your head to the flash, right? Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's decide which way are we going to face her. Are we going to face her uphill or downhill? Does it matter? It does to me, and I'll tell you why. I want to get, there's open sky over here. I don't want to get the open sky backlighting her hair. I'd like to get a natural hair light from the open sky. So I'll turn her back to the light, right, right here, mm -hmm. and your right foot forward like this. Wait on the back, let the front knee relax, and just fold your arms like this. The interesting thing also is, what are we going to do with this hand here? Uh, you can have both hands going up like this. Uh, do you like that, or do you like one tucked in? I like that. You like that? Yeah, well, leave it. Especially See, that's, that's the key. Do you like the way it looks? But if you're going to tuck one hand in, tuck in the hand that's closest to camera. So, from which side... Are we going to bring in the bare bulb, and why? We're going to bring the bare bulb in from this side, why? Her face is turned in this direction. Great. So, now we don't want to point the strobe directly at her, because the light comes out of the side of the strobe. The reflector is on it to make the light come out forward. But without a reflector, the light comes at the side of the strobe. So instead of pointing the point at her, we're going to turn the side of the light to her. We're going to bring it over on this side and create the same light pattern that we do when we're creating a portrait inside the studio. Light into both eyes and just a little small shadow coming down to the side of the nose. Everybody knows just what we're talking about, right? Yes? <laughs> So, Clay, you're going to adjust the light. I'll place it where I think it is, and then you can tell me. Uh, we don't, by the way, turn it straight up only because it's going to come back into the lens of the camera. So, we'll turn it down, and that way the back of the flash keeps the light from shining into the lens of the camera. Now, we're going to actually, one of the great things about this 120J uh, light is that you can point the automatic sensor to her and the top of it swivels. So you can put the light at any angle you want to her. So if Clay, you'll adjust the light and get the exposure, I'll help you with that. I'm coming down at a low angle to get the colored leaves there and I have the darker leaves below or you can see the darker leaves at the bottom of the tree and the brighter leaves right around her head. It's almost like we got a spotlight on the background. Are you ready to test the light? Let's get, let me give me a Polaroid test on this. I need a dark slide for the back of the camera as well. Now I've got this so close that you're not going to believe the gorgeous background that we have here. Thank you. Linda, just straighten your back up. That's it. And your face to the right some. And your chin down to me. The camera's pretty low. Flash go? Yep. yep. We're going to put film right. on. Yeah. Well, somebody time oh, me for, for a minute. 30, for the Polaroid, we should have gone to 60. I'll shoot it at 60. 
Why is that? Just so that uh, turn your face this way just a tiny bit. Just, just a hint of a smile in your eyes. Your chin up a tiny bit more. All right. What we're doing for a Polaroid to make it look good is we have to expose for the highlights. For a negative, we're going to get more detail in the shadow. So there may be one f-stop between the Polaroid and the uh, regular picture. So we're going to go for one minute now <clears throat> and just check out. I'm using now a telephoto lens. Why am I using a telephoto lens? Because I, want, I don't want the whole background to show. All I want is the golden autumn color behind her. We're in the same setting, but the picture's going to look differently. Why were the picture's going to look different? Why is it going to look different? Because we're zeroing in to just the yellow background that's behind her. Okay. Her eyes are a little, her eyes are closed there, but it doesn't matter. But look at the, what we're doing here. No. Well, that's pretty pretty. It's gorgeous. <laughs> Did I? <laughs> Here's what I decided from the Polaroid. <clears throat> I'm going to come in a little closer and crop out the bottom of it there. Here's something else I noticed, Clay. Excuse me, can you just back out of the camera, Bob? Here's something else I noticed with the flash. At a 60th of a second, you're cutting out all the daylight. Can I see the one with the eyes closed? Polaroid? The Polaroid at a 30th of a second? Thank you. At a 30th of a second, you're picking up more ambient light, and so you're not aware of the flash. At a 60th of a second, you're cutting out so much of the flash, I mean, so much of the daylight, that you see it's a flash there. So we're going to go a 30th. We're going to leave everything the way it is. I'm just going to come in closer to get rid of some of the bottom there. But there you see what happens when you, when you, it not only does it darken the background, but it makes the flash a lot more obvious. All right, let's, uh, <clears throat> Six, 17, number all right, we're going to do the same thing again. Uh, we got her in sunlight, so we'll have to, Move yeah, come, come, that's it. Turn your body a little bit to the side and turn your face back to me. All right, is that flash closer than it was? Just a hint of a smile right there. It's a good thing that we were able to look at the test earlier before we made the exposure, because you can see that the slower shutter speed enabled us to pick up the natural daylight on our hair. Now, it's true that the photograph could have been made with the reflector on the flash, but I think you would have been much more aware that the flash was actually there. The bare bulb is much more subtle. Let's put it together with a man now for the next portrait. Downhill from him. So let him come here. Oh, then you can slide. And just sort of like curl up into him. That's it. <laughs> Do you see, look, look, look at the natural light skimming his forehead. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to lose that. So if I leave the shutter open a little bit longer, I'm going to switch to a fifteenth of a second instead of a thirtieth. And a fifteenth of a second, I'm going to pick up that natural light on his forehead and on his nose there. Cheeks together and smiling. Whoa, okay. I like the picture on the left better because it just opens up the faces. The flash makes the eyes jump out and shapes the faces, as opposed to the photograph on the right, which is acceptable, but much flatter. Either one could go, but the one on the left just says more. Here is another setting, completely different. We have strong backlighting all the way through. In a situation like this, we don't need a light to come through the veil because it's all there with natural light. We do need a strong light to balance the bright light behind her. Now, if the light comes in close to the camera, as it does on the left, the lighting is fairly flat. But when we bring the light to the right, you can see how the detail on the gown shows up so much better. Now they're in total shade. 
but a bare bulb flash coming in from our left because the heads are turned in that direction opens up the faces and shapes them beautifully. Again, it's less than the ambient light, so you're not aware that the flash is in the photograph. On the left side here, they're in the shade and we're exposing for the area in the shade, so the background is a little overexposed. On the right, on the upper picture, he's in bright sunlight, so we have to use a strong flash to bring the level of the light up on his face to the background light so you have good color throughout. The same situation here, good color throughout, except in the lower picture, her face is one half in shade. So from the same direction the sunlight is coming from, on our right, we're going to bring in a strong flash to open up the shadows on her face. When she turns and looks at him, her face is completely in the shade, so we need to bring a flash around from behind to light her profile the same as his face is lit. When the background is important, as it is in these photographs, we're going to take an exposure meter reading of the background and put the same amount of flash on her coming in from our left crossing over the gown and another light behind her to light the veil. The veil light is the same intensity as the main light coming in from our left. These pictures appear to have very little in common and yet there's a strong similarity between the two. We're exposing not for the windows but for the area around the subjects. We're setting the camera lens to the exact exposure that the meter calls for for the area behind them and then we're adding a flash to the subjects to match the f-stop on the lens. The shutter speed picks up the detail we want in the background. Kodak's new professional 400 film allowed me to get this exposure almost when it was completely dark. I measured the ambient light at her face and then matched it with the strobe and put another strobe behind her to light the veil. The shutter speed was one full second to pick up this much light. Camera handheld, no, just joking, on a tripod. You can see by watching the tape that we're having a great time at the class, but more important than entertaining you, I want to educate you. I want to keep all the statements very simple so that you can go back and take the same kind of pictures that we're taking here and know exactly what you're doing, taking all the guesswork out. In order to review some of the information and to add a little bit more, I'm going to show you a clip from a tape we made a short while ago that I think will be very, very concise in bringing back to you a lot of the information that we've discussed already and some new information. Just by watching this, you should be able to put it right in your hip pocket and use it. I know that this portrait looks exactly like just natural light, and I'm glad of that. But in actuality, that's a little strobe behind her highlighting her hair. And there's another bare bulb strobe off to the right to give shape to her face. A reflector to the left just wraps the light around. Now she's posed in deep shade. I'm putting a reflector off to my right and taking an exposure meter reading with a reflector in place. Then adding him to the picture and not even caring that the background is so overexposed. I like the effect. We're still taking an exposure meter reading with a single reflector in place, posing him first and bringing her behind and on top. A dull overcast day creates a beautiful fill light. A 40 millimeter lens gives us the whole expanse of the coastline. When I turn their faces towards each other, his profile picked up a natural light. I needed to put a bare bulb strobe behind Clay just out of camera range to light her profile. A high camera position and tall grass created this background. Strong sunlight overexposed it while I exposed for her face. There's no light on her face until we place a bare bulb off to my left to shape the front of her face. Look at the difference now. You see the outline of the front of her face. Now she's seated in exactly the same pose. 
the bare bulb strobe off to my left is so subtle you don't even realize it's there. But now when we bring him into the picture, both heads are turned to my right so the strobe moves over to the other side. The same pose standing, both heads turned and tipped in the same angle towards the light source creates a smooth pattern of light on their faces. But here, the sunlight is so strong coming from the left, I had to use a strong flash on my right side to open up the shadows. A high camera position here kept the background grass. By lowering the camera position, the same spot now has the water as a background. And a strobe at a camera range behind Clay is lighting her profile to match the direct sunlight on his face. We found this beautiful setting for the notebook issue in England. I wanted to show the environment, but still focus the attention on the people. I tried wherever possible to use natural light and supplement it very carefully with a bare bulb strobe just to add the highlights where I needed them. I used a 40 millimeter lens here to show the environment behind them and added the light to her face from a strobe at a camera range behind the groom. A light close to the camera here opened up the whole shadowed side of their faces and I placed their profiles against a simple setting. Natural sunlight coming from behind her and a bare bulb strobe off to my left shaped her face. Then we added the groom to the picture. We turned her face back to the natural light, turned his profile to her, and once again placed a bare bulb strobe off to the right. When I turned their faces towards each other, I placed the strobe out of camera range behind him to light her profile. Now we're using a 60 millimeter lens to confine the group within the building so that no sky shows. As we build the groups, we put a bare bulb just out of camera range in the background to the left to separate them from the background. 1 30th f5.6. Now again we're using available light combined with strobe. The strobe is just inside the archway to light her profile. All natural light with a 40 millimeter lens. Just taking advantage of the lines and the direct sunlight on both of their faces. They're under a porch here I exposed for the natural light and just brought in a bare bulb strobe off to my right to shape them a little bit more definitively. I used a 40 millimeter lens here so I could include all the arches in the background. I posed the bride close to the lens, added the two girls, put the men in between them and used all available light. I enjoy using a 40 millimeter lens when I want to show environment around the subject, but I still need the subject up close to dominate the picture. I'll take a reading of the light in the background and set the exposure for that. Then bring a bare bulb in to my left to light her and the two of them together. The same amount of light on them as there is in the background provides a perfect balance. Now we've placed them further into the background, turned their bodies and faces, so I'm now using profile lighting one bare bulb strobe off to the left to balance the light in the room. I feel like I want to share even more with you, so I'm going to pull up some photographs that we made not in this class, but in other classes and with some of our customers. The funny thing about it is that if you're not aware the flash was used, you wouldn't even know it, and that's the key to the whole thing, to make it look completely natural. Again, we're using just one or two little flashes to pull all of this together. Don't pass a spot like this by. You can frame the subjects in the tree, have bright sunlight on the background, and then use a strong flash on the family to bring them up to the brilliance of the background. It's a perfect place for a family picture. Even when you don't think you have the ideal spot for a picture, you can come up high as we did on the lower left picture and just use the grass as a background. Then on the upper right, 
we've actually used the trees in the area to look like their backyard. I love to take family pictures where the people are standing so you can see the heights as the children are growing. The same pose, but totally different situations. Strong backlighting on the lower left calls for a strong flash coming in from our right. In the subdued lighting in the upper right, we needed a weak bare bulb to light her face and another flash behind her to backlight her veil. Again, we're reposing the people in the shade. We have to keep the flash just under the ambient light where they're seated. But because there's so many people, we did use the reflector on the flash. We're keeping the big people in the back and the little kids up front. A translucent fabric softened direct sunlight to what appears to be open shade. But when the faces are turned to the camera and there's too much shadow, we have to bring in a bare bulb strobe from the same side that the sunlight is coming in to have the light wrap around naturally. Remember to keep the additional light on the same side that the strong light is coming in from just to have that smooth transition from highlight to shadows. When the father and daughter are completely backlit, I still keep the light off camera to my right to shape the faces. To get detail in the skin of black people, we don't change the aperture and we don't make the light any stronger. We bring in light from behind to create highlights on the sides of their faces and the same amount of light as we would ordinarily use on the front of their faces from a bare bulb. In both of these cases, I've turned their faces away from the light to create those highlights just by daylight. When I photograph people in a home environment, I want to show as much of the home as possible so I use a wide angle lens. But I bring the people very, very close to the camera so that they dominate the photograph and the background remains quietly in the rear. Flash again is bringing their faces up to the ambient light in the background. The same technique applies here. I'm using the church background as the whole basis for the picture, but I'm keeping the people as far away from the background as possible. A wide angle lens and the people almost right up on top of me. I'm measuring the ambient light in the background and exposing for that, then bringing the same amount of light from a flash onto the subject. Let's review the simple placement of two lights in both pictures. One lights the people, a second one, about 10 feet behind, lights the carpeting and helps separate them from the background. The key is to have the whole background of the church and yet keep the people up close to the lens so that they dominate the photograph in spite of the strong background material. The backgrounds are important in both of these pictures also. In the upper left, I wanted just a small portion of the background, so I used a longer telephoto lens. A wide angle lens on the bridal portrait picks up the entire train of her dress and the church background. I'm keeping her as far from the background as possible so that she still dominates the photograph. We're measuring and exposing for the ambient light and matching the flash on her to the existing light. I couldn't really end this tape without sharing with you one of my true loves, soft focus portraiture by window light. But you know this isn't completely by window light. We've actually added strobe, but so subtly you're not even aware of it. I'm split lighting all three of their faces with the natural light that's coming from the window. And from the same side, my left side, I'm bringing in a very weak flash. The weak flash takes the highlights and wraps it all the way around to the shadowed side of the face and the whole picture looks totally natural. Just see what combining daylight with strobe can do for your window light portraits. And the soft focus is a touch that I love.
You know, I can't even believe myself that I made some of these pictures. I've been in business 45 years and I'm more excited now than ever before. It's not just that mechanics are changing, it's not that people are changing, but it's that we're able to express ourselves more freely. Just simple tools, the camera with natural daylight, the camera with the light with two flashes, just small flashes like this, with the reflector on or the reflector off. It doesn't really make that much difference. What you want to do is to feel it in your heart and then get it on the paper. The concept of giving your feelings, expressing your own feelings through your photographs is something that I would like to pass on to you. If you do it with one or two flashes, off the camera, bare ball, with the reflector, who cares? The ability, though, to tell people what's in your heart through your photographs, that's where it takes off. You know, we have the ability and an obligation to leave memories for people that will be appreciated for generations to come. And that's probably one of the neatest things that we as photographers can do. We have to learn to technically be able to make a statement through our photographs. And then once we're able to know how to pose the people, how to light them, how to use these flashes, it's going to free us up to make whatever statement we want to make. The people who view our pictures are going to remember life not necessarily as it was, but as we interpret it. So I'm pushing you, I'm really hoping that you will study and learn and free yourself of the techniques once you know what you're doing and are comfortable with it so that you can make your own statement and people will recognize your work as you are the maker of those pictures. Let's get together again. In the meantime, if you want, I've done some other things. I've published a newsletter for the last seven years. I've made some other videotapes. You can contact me or somebody else at my studio. The number will be right here on the screen. And I hope that through Sunpack, I'll be able to visit with you again and come back into your home to give you more detailed instructions. And you better believe that if it's another year before I make this tape, there's going to be a heck of a lot of more new images and new ideas, and they'll be coming straight to you. Thanks a lot for sticking with it. Review the tape, come back to me, and if you want to get a chance, come visit me in my studio in Maryland or come to one of the programs that I'll be giving around the country. Thank you very much for sticking with it, and I look forward to meeting you. Teachers, a rare combination of meticulous artistry, impeccable classic form, and contemporary Hollywood styling. Now, Don Blair, Monty Zucker, and Clay Blackmore share with you their 100 years of combined photographic experience. For five days, these three masters came together at Winona School, 